This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Wheaties presents Dangerous Assignment. <laughs> On stage tonight from Hollywood, Dangerous Assignment. Another in the Wheaties' big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize this assignment is going to involve a dead correspondent, a Burmese girl, a trip through the jungle, and a fallen idol. Morning, Commissioner. Steve. Last night, an American newspaper correspondent named Kent Jackson was murdered in Rangoon, Burma. Your plane leaves in an hour. I'm flying clear to Burma because a correspondent gets himself killed? Kent Jackson had been posing as a European political refugee. We think he'd been investigating some sort of political refugee racket. Hmm, maybe he was getting too warm. Looks that way. Now, we have one lead. A Burmese girl named Linya, who we think witnessed the killing. Where is this Linya? She's disappeared. Oh, great. Your first contact in Rangoon will be Chambers at our legation there. He'll fill you in on the background. Get over there, Steve. Find this girl, Linya, and solve Kent Jackson's murder. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment? Good luck. Anybody who knows baseball has played with a bat knows Jackie Robinson is about the hottest thing in the game. And now, Jackie has turned actor to play himself in the Jackie Robinson story. It'll be turning up at your hometown theater soon, plan to take the kids. And by way of a short postscript to the movie, maybe you'd be interested in what Jackie told us about Wheaties. He says, a bowl of those crisp whole wheat flakes sure helps me get set for the day. Well, that's about it. I think you'll like the Jackie Robinson story. And I'm dead sure you'll like Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. Try them both. Now, here is Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. Sure, this is going to be real easy. All I have to do is find a missing girl named Linya in one of the wildest countries in the world. Then... Get her to put the finger on a killer who'll probably be trying to do likewise to me. It's Monday when I get to Rangoon. It's raining and hot. And Chambers is waiting for me at his house. Well, Mitchell, I was sitting right here reading the night of Jackson's murder when suddenly I heard shots out in the garden. This girl, Linya, ran in here screaming at me to save her. I ran out in the garden, got clipped on the head. Oh, I wondered what the bandage was for. When I came to, Linya was gone. Look, uh, did you know this girl, Linya, at all? Oh, yes. She worked in a restaurant about half a mile from here. I used to drop in there frequently. Uh, I don't get the connection between Linya and Jackson's murder. When Linya was shot at in my garden, one of the bullets was embedded in the side of the house. The police dug it out and compared it with the bullet that killed Jackson 15 minutes earlier. The two slugs matched. Oh, so Jackson's killer was after Linya, too. Well, there's my tie-in, all right. You know much about the deal Jackson was investigating? Yes. Somebody here in Burma has been receiving political refugees from Europe for a price. Then, whoever it is, contacts the European country involved and, for more dough, delivers the refugees back to them. That right. sounds like a real sweet deal. Well, if I'm going to find this girl, Linya, I better start getting some leads about her. Let's see. You say she worked at a restaurant? Yes, a French restaurant run by Papa Valder. You'll find it down the street about half a mile. Okay, I guess Papa Valder's is my next stop. Well, see you later, Chambers. I am sorry, monsieur, but I am closed for the night. I cannot serve you. I uh, didn't come here for food. I came for information. 
You, uh, Poppy Valdere? Uh, oui, monsieur. I'd like to talk to you about one of your waitresses, a girl named Linya. Oh, uh, 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 Miss Valdere. Hmm? Oh, I didn't see you over there. If you wish to talk about Linya, you would talk to me. Really? Who are you? Lieutenant Ramat of the police. And you? Steve Mitchell. May I ask why you are interested in a girl, Linya? You may ask, Lieutenant, and I think these credentials of mine will answer your question. I see. I will be happy to cooperate with you, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you. Now, what can you tell me about the girl, Papa Valder? Oh, uh, very little, Monsieur Linya. She was a good waitress and a very good girl. Oh, where'd she live? In a rooming house about a half hour's walk from this place. Uh, here is the address. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, Linya walked home every night, huh? Uh, that is right, monsieur. Well, then it seems logical that somewhere on her route she passed the spot of Jackson's killing and witnessed it. I have investigated that. Linya could not possibly have arrived at the scene of the killing at the time when the killing took place. I walked off the distance myself. She could not have been closer than three blocks to it. Well, then I don't get it. Why did the killer take off after her? Is most puzzling. It sure is. The only other answer is that Linya knows something that she doesn't realize she knows. That means I've got to find her before the killer does. Rangoon is a large city, Mitchell. Yeah, and we're not even sure she's still in Rangoon. Well, thanks for the information, gentlemen. I think I'll go over to Linya's rooming house and see what I can find out there. <laughs> Wake up. Snap out of it. Oh. Uh, uh. Come on, prop those little lids open a minute. Uh, the return to reality is never as good as the dream. I saved the philosophy. You run this rooming house? Yes, it is so. You got any idea where this girl Linya could be? No, none at all. Come on, Rip Van Winkle. Pull yourself up off that desk. Uh, what do you wish to know? Do you know whether Linya had any relatives in this town, any place that she could have gone to hide? I she spoke of only one, a great uncle. What's his name? Dalai Singh is a priest. Hmm. Where could I find this Dalai Singh? Oh, Dalai Singh. Go outside and face to the west. You will see the temple. Okay, thanks. Well, so long, dreamboat. I locate the native temple and go inside. The only light comes from a few scattered candles. There are life-sized idols sitting up on perches along the walls. Then I spot a light coming from a room in the back of the temple. I start toward it. Suddenly, there's a grating noise. I look up. One of the idols is toppling over right on top of me. I dive to one side as it falls and it hits me a glancing blow on the shoulder that sends me falling on floor. There's a rustle of drapes behind the idol and running steps. By the time I pull myself up off the floor, there's no one in sight. I go into the back room. A little old man with a face like a prune is sitting there, staring straight ahead. Excuse me, I'd like to talk to you. I said I'd like to talk to you. Look, would you mind focusing your eyes on me a minute? I must apologize. I am withdrawn. Hmm? Yes, my son. What is it? You're Dalai Singh? That is my name. And you're Linya's great uncle? That is the earthly relationship? Yes. <laughs> that was a pretty earthly reception you gave me a couple of minutes ago. I do not understand. That idol, the one that almost fell on me. Uh, you must pardon me. I was so immersed in meditation, I heard nothing. Oh, well, I guess I wasn't that immersed because it sounded awfully noisy to me. What do you wish of me? I'm trying to find Linya. For what purpose? I want to find out what she knows about a killing that took place a few nights ago. Is this your true purpose, my son? That and protecting her from whoever's after it. Come closer. Now, gaze into my eyes. No, do not blink. Gaze steadily. Look, what are you trying to do? Hypnotize me? But a little longer. So, there is honesty in your eyes. 
You have passed the first test. Well, that's good to know. Now, can you tell me where Linya is? Be in front of the Shui Dagon Pagoda in one hour. Shui Dagon Pagoda? How do I go about finding it? You cannot fail to see it. It looms over the entire city. Okay, in one hour. Will Linya be there? Everything will be accomplished. Depart in peace. Del I Singh was right. It isn't hard to spot the pagoda, even at night. It's up on a rise overlooking the city. On the way up there, I get the feeling I'm being followed. I stop and turn around just in time to see a skinny little gent dart into the alley behind me. By the time I get to the pagoda, there's an uneasy thought packing away at my brain. This whole deal could be a trap. But there's nothing to do except to wait and find out. Mr. Mitchell. Hmm? Ah. My arm! You are Look, hurt. I don't like guys slipping up behind me. Please. Hey, you're the guy who's been following me. Yes, but I bring you no harm. Who are you? What do you want? I am Maoli. You seek the girl, Linya? I can take you to her. Yeah? How do I know this isn't a trap? Who sent you? The priest. Dalai Singh. I see. Where is Linya? I must take you there. Come, we will walk. Okay, Molly, but get this. I'll have one eye on you the whole way, and if this is a trap, if anything happens, it's going to happen to you first. Come on. Look, we've been winding our way through back alleys for the last half hour, Molly. But here we are at proper place. Okay, you first, and don't try anything. Come. Dark in here. I will turn on the light. So. Well, I sing. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Look, what is all this? You send a guy to take me on a cook's tour of the city, then he brings me down a back alley to you again. You sure don't believe in taking any chances. The toying with chance <clears throat> sometimes invites disaster. Okay, okay. Now, where's Linya? Uh, fetch the girl, Molly. Very well. Answer. Well, so this is Linya. You took a lot of finding, little lady. Let the man speak first, my child. Look, Linya, the man who tried to kill you the other night is probably the same one who killed Jackson. Did you get a good look at him? Uh, one moment, Mr. Mitchell. Hmm? You accept this girl as Linya? Well, of course. You just got through telling me that... No. No, I did not say she was Linya. Wait a minute. You mean she isn't? You have passed the second test, Mr. Mitchell. If you had been the one who was trying to harm Linya... Then you would have known this girl was not she. Oh, great. Look, isn't it about time the examinations were over? What do I have to get? Straight A's? You have proven yourself. Now, I will direct you to Linya. Is she here in Rangoon? No. You must purchase a ticket on the river boat. River boat? Yes. It will take you up the Irrawaddy River. A person will approach you on the boat. You will say to that person... The jungle is very dark. If that person replies, but soon it will be light again, that person is your friend and will lead you to Linya at the next port. Sounds like a pretty involved routine. Linya has placed herself under my protection. I can do no less than my best. And now we part. I to return to the temple, you to take the trip up the river. May your journey be as safe as mine will be. I go down to the waterfront and buy a ticket on the riverboat. I've got an hour before it shoves off, and then I realize I don't even know whether it's going to be a man or a woman who contacts me, so I go back to the temple to ask Dalai Singh. I start walking along the row of idols, and the one somebody tried to push over on me is still lying on the floor, but there's no vacant spot on the wall. There's another idol sitting there, but that idol moves a little. I go closer. Then, as it crumples over and drops to the floor, I see it's not an idol after all. It's Dalai Singh with a knife in his heart. Maybe you've got the idea that I tell you all these things about Wheaties just so you'll go out and buy them. Well, that isn't it at all. I'm not worried about you. You've been eating Wheaties long enough to know how good they are. It's those neighbors of yours I'm thinking about. Now, suppose you just go over there some morning and just tell them all the nice things about Wheaties. Like, uh, they're 
Whole wheat, and they're wonderful with milk and fruit, and they make you feel fine, and kids love them, and they're flaky and crisp and loaded with vitamins. I think that'd be a mighty neighborly thing to do. Oh, say, I just happened to think, what if the neighbors are listening in tonight, too? They'll probably be over here tomorrow morning to tell you about wheat. Well, have fun. Now, back to Dangerous Assignment and Steve Mitchell. May your journey be as safe as mine. That's what Dalai Singh had said to me, and now here he is, dead. And that gives me a strong hint as to what my journey is going to be like, because if Dalai Singh talked before he died, there's only going to be somebody trying to contact me aboard the boat. There'll also be somebody else trying to kill me. Well, we shove off. It's an old side-wheeler. I give the passengers the once-over trying to figure out which one to use the password about the dark jungle on. There are a few natives, a fat guy carrying a white trench coat, a smooth-looking Egyptian, and a girl. The kind of a girl you'd vote as the one you'd most like to take a trip up a river with. I stand there at the rail, and pretty soon she saunters over. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Steve. You? Marge. Hi, Marge. You got a smoke? Sure. Here. Thanks. Light? Long way from home, aren't you, Steve? Funny, I was thinking the same about you. No, a river, boat, a bar, that's home to me. Where are you heading? Up the river, Mandalay. Gonna sing in a joint up there. Oh? Yeah. I guess my voice wouldn't get me into the store club, but they're not so particular in Burma. You've been around this neck of the woods quite a while, huh? About three lifetimes. Say, uh, that jungle is very dark, isn't it? Hmm? I said that jungle is very dark. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I imagine it'll... What's the matter? That fat gent over there with the white trench coat, is he a friend of yours? Hmm? No, why? He seems to be trying to take in every word. Yeah. You know him? I've seen him around Rangoon a few times. I think his name is Lazarus. I see. Uh, excuse me a minute, Marge. Yeah, sure. Good evening, Lazarus. Huh? Huh? Hey, just a minute. What do you want? You seemed pretty interested in what I was saying to the young lady a minute ago. Why? I don't know what you're talking about. No, you were sure drinking in every word, Lazarus. You're mistaken. I was merely enjoying the view. Good night. Uh-huh. I hope you will pardon my intrusion on your privacy. It was just that I could not avoid paying homage to such beauty. You're a real flowery type guy, aren't you? Oh, Steve. Hi. Looks like you just weren't meant to be lonely, Marge. This is, uh... What did you say your name was, Buster? Camille, at your service. Camille, meet Steve. I am indeed honored, Steve. I hope you will forgive my intrusion on your tete-a-tete. Yeah. Egyptian, aren't you? Yes, from Cairo. What uh, brings you here to Burma? Quite possibly the same thing that brings you here, Steve. What's that? Yes, I sense that we are two kindred spirits each seeking adventure, each willing to travel around the world to find it. You're just looking for adventure, huh? Yes. You see, Steve, I am a romantic at heart. Else, why would I leave my considerable estate in Cairo to travel up a Burmese river on a rickety boat? (laughs) Brother, if I had a considerable estate in Cairo or Cairo, Illinois, I wouldn't be paddling through this swamp. The quest for adventure often leads us to unlikely surroundings. It sure does. And, uh, Now, please excuse me. Perhaps it was fated that we should meet Steve. If so, we shall meet again. Well, it'd be pretty hard to avoid meeting again on this tub. I'll see you around, commies. Good night to you both. Ha! Get a load of him. I am a romantic at heart yet. Yeah. Hey, uh, look, Marge, just before you spotted that guy Lazarus watching us, I made a remark to you about the jungle being pretty dark. Yeah, I remember. You started to say something in reply. What was it? It'll keep, Steve. Oh? Okay. Well, I think I'll turn in. I'll see you in the morning, huh? Yeah. Matter of fact, I'll make a point of it. I stand there at the rail alone, staring down into the black water of the Irrawaddy River, wondering how many crocodiles per cubic foot... At this point, it looks like Marge is the contact who's to lead me to the girl, Linya. That leaves either the flowery Egyptian Kamis or the guy with the white trench coat, Lazarus, as the killer of Dolly Singh. 
but I've got to be sure who's who before I can do anything about it. Then suddenly there's a faint sound behind me. A hand shoves me. Out of the corner of my eye, I get a glimpse of a white coat as I topple over the side. There's a loose line trailing in the water. I grab at it as I hit. It almost jerks my arm out of the socket, but I hang on. Got no desire to be a crocodile bait. And finally, I pull myself back on board. There's no one in sight, but I know the white coat I spotted belongs to one Mr. Lazarus. The next morning, we dock at a river port. Lazarus is the first one ashore. I follow him to a little shop. Oh, yes, sir. May I sell you some nice trinkets this morning? Where's the guy who just came in here? But I do not know what you're talking about. Wait a huh? minute. That door over there, where does it lead? Oh, just to the back room. But I have nice trinkets. But, sir, where are you going? No, wait. Hello, Lazarus. Good morning, Mr. Mitchell. Come in, please. Huh? Quickly, we have no time to lose. Look, what's this all about, Lazarus? I did not have a chance to contact you about the boat, Mitchell. You were never alone. So I reasoned that if I left the boat in a hurry, you would follow me. You did. You, you're trying to tell me that you're my contact? I am. Del I Singh is a friend of mine. Don't give me that. You tried to shove me overboard last night. I spotted your white trench coat. That coat was stolen from my stateroom. All right, try this. The jungle is very dark. But soon it'll be light again. And as further proof of my identity, Linya. What? Yes, Mr. Lazarus? Hey. You may join us now, child. So, so this is Linya. You've been hiding in the back of the shop ever since you left Rangoon, huh? Yes. My great uncle, Dalai Singh, said he would send help to me. How is he? I'm sorry, Linya, but he's dead. What's that? Dalai Singh? Dead? My one friend. Gone. I think the same person who's after you killed him. And an American newspaper man named Jackson. Linya, now you've got to tell me who that person is. I? Oh, but I know nothing, Mr. Mitchell. I do not know why someone is trying to kill me. Look, you worked at Papa Valdar's restaurant in Rangoon. Yes. Every night, you leave right at 8 and start walking home. Now, the night of the killing, you must have seen something on the way home. No, I saw nothing. Then you heard something. Shots, for instance. No. Hey, Mitchell, do you suppose the killer mistook Linya for another girl? I don't know. Look, I'm going to try once more, Linya. Now, try to remember. Yes. On the night of the killing, you left Papa Valdez at 8 o'clock as usual, right? Yes. Now, 15 minutes later, you were within four blocks of the scene of the killing. That's about half a mile from Papa Valdez's restaurant. No, I did not get that far. What? I realized I had forgotten to take some food that Papa Valdez had given me. So I went back to the restaurant to get it. But, Michel, that means Linya could not possibly have witnessed the killing. It must be a case of mistaken identity. Just a minute, Lazarus. Keep on, Linya. Well, I opened the door. Then I saw someone inside the restaurant. Who was it? I do not know. I had never seen this person before. I guess she means me. <gasps> that is the one. Marge. There's a gun. Hold it. Nice and steady, all of you. Well, Steve, you were concentrating so hard on following Lazarus when he left the boat. You made it pretty easy for me to follow you. Thanks for leading me to Linya. Yeah. Congratulations to me. Chump of the world. Oh, now, Buster, let's not cry in our beer. Oh, my, such long faces. It looks like little Marge will have to cheer you up. Well, what are you going to do, tell a joke or something? You know, I might at that. Because I've got a real funny one stored up for you kids. It'll kill you. <laughs> No kidding. It actually may cost you money not to eat breakfast. Honest. Look. You skip breakfast, so comes lunch, and you've got to eat like a horse to catch up. And that's tough on the budget. So here's the deal. Start breakfast with a nice bowl of crisp whole wheat Wheaties with milk and some fruit, maybe. They'll be just about wearing off at noon, and you'll be all set for a nice, reasonable lunch. And you know, with those Wheaties in there, you'll feel as good as money in the bank all morning long. Now, here is the conclusion of Dangerous Assignment. What are you going to do to us? Are you kidding? You mean you're going to kill us just because Linya happened to see you in a restaurant? That's the general idea, Lazzy old boy. Well, why don't you get it over with, Marge? In a minute, Buster. You called. You can call me Steve, and what are you waiting for? My little helper. I don't want any slip-ups. Helper? Then you're not in this deal alone. No, he's tying up that shopkeeper out in front. Oh, here he is now. Papa Valdez. Oui. 
Good evening, Linia. You have been most difficult to find. Well, I begin to get it. You and Papa Valdez were running this political refugee racket together, Marge. You killed the correspondent, Jackson, then went back to report to Valdez, but just then Linia stuck her head in the door. You two didn't want to be seen together, so you took off after Linia. Come, my dear. Let us attend to the business at hand without further delay. Okay, Pop. Wait. Huh? You must spare my life. I beg of you. Oh, save it, hero. But I was only trying to do a favor for a friend. I had nothing to do with you it. Sure you sure take nice, me. brave guys to work with. Steve. Please, don't kill me. I'll do anything to say. Please, I beg of you. Get me. up off your knees. Take it like a big boy, Lazarus. Suddenly I realize what Lazarus is up to. He's squealing for mercy please, like a stuck please. pig. But all the while he's inching slowly forward on his knees toward Marge's gun. I said get up. Very well. Let go of that gun. Valder is behind Marge. He whips out his gun and jumps to one side, but I meet him halfway. Slug hits the wall and Valder hits the floor. Marge gives Lazarus a foot in the face and swings her gun free, but a second too late. Let go of my wrist. Drop the gun or I'll break your arm. Oh, yeah. Drop it. Thanks. I'll take it now. You okay, Lazarus? Quite. Looks like he's a little bigger hero than you gave him credit for, Marge. Okay, okay. So things didn't turn out quite like I'd figured. No hard feelings, Steve. Oh, no? No hard feelings? You kill a newspaper man and a priest to say nothing of a few political refugees here and there along the line, but no hard feelings. Well, you've got a right to your theories. Can I go now? You are kidding. Look, Buster, you've got no proof of any of this. There weren't any witnesses to either of those killings, and if you think you're going to get any kind of confession out of me... I've got your gun, Marge, and that's just as good as a confession. What are you talking about? The police back in Rangoon have the slug that killed Jackson. Five will get you ten as matches these in your gun. Wait a minute. Yeah, even in Burma they've got ballistics. And I bet that's one word you'll wish had never been invented. But no hard feelings, Marge. I mean, Buster. Come on. <laughs> Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Dunleavy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif, with music by Basil Adlam, and is produced and directed by Bill Carn. Join us again next Wednesday when Brian Dunleavy as Steve Mitchell embarks on another Dangerous Assignment. And this is your Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen next Monday night to Frank Lovejoy and Nightbeat on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. Going to bake a pie sometime soon? Make it with Crust Quick, the Betty Crocker pie crust mix. You know it's a tender, flaky crust that's at the bottom of every delicious pie, sure as you use Crust Quick. And so easy. Just add water to Crust Quick. Mmm, and what pie crust? Tender crust, tasty crust, rich, short, lovely crust, just like Betty Crocker makes. And you can make it. Just add water to Crust Quick. Crust Quick, the Betty Crocker pie crust mix. <laughs> Tomorrow, Perry Como sings at the Supper Club on NBC. This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind.